All right, part two. That's what's left over. I boiled it down again and strained it. And we went to the smaller pot. Got the fire going again. I'm going to let that cook a little while. And what it's going to do is going to, some of the water is going to boil off of it. Not all of it, but some of it. And this stuff here, I'm going to take back to the back of the property and dump it. Because I don't have anything that eats meat. I don't have dogs. Got some sorry old lazy cats, but they won't, they won't eat it. They're uh, spoiled. All they'll eat is cat food. And I don't feed my chickens anything meat. I know it won't hurt them, but that's just me. I don't. But uh, so I'm going to dump it out there, and there's possums and coons and stray cats and all kind of stuff back there that will eat it. So I'll just go out there and dump it and get rid of it. All right. Be back in a minute. All right, here we go. That's what we wound up with. Now it looks like a lot, but it's not really going to be a lot of solid tallow. About a quarter of that, maybe. I've got enough fire left to roast that rooster if he don't shut up. But anyway, I'm going to let it sit here and get cold. It'll solidify and rise to the top. And if it don't rain, I may have to take it in the shop in a minute. Looks like it's going to come up a rain. I'll uh, show you what it looks like. And the last step will be boil it down again and then fine strain it. And I got the other hide thought out. A little rough shape. But I can salvage part of it. Alright, where am I going? Alright, show you that when it gets all solidified. Alright. That hide didn't turn out too bad. Trimmed a little bit of it off to give it a little bit more of a shape, but it's gonna be all right. You see that red tint? This one was in the freezer. And I cannot remember where this one came from. I think this is one from last year that I forgot about. And I guess sitting in that sitting so long like that in the freezer that blood just soaked in that's going to be blood stains but if it don't come out it'll just give it a nice off coloring now our tallow I set it in the shop refrigerator so it would hurry up and solidify it's in 70 mid 70s maybe it's more than 75 so we're going with this crazy weather again so it'll solidify a lot faster in the refrigerator than it will out here one more thing right quick anytime you're handling hides raw meat raw fish that type of thing now yesterday before I started those fish on the last video I bleached down the table washed it down good in the sink and this morning I did the same thing before I started with this wash your hands with an antibacterial soap several times as the whole as you're doing your process I just put that hide in the lime water and I had my hands all in there mixing it and getting it all saturated good and now I'm going to scrub my hands down with this and then I'm going to take a couple of drops of good old Clorox and then I rinse my hands with that because as far as I know, that's all the meat and hide I'm going to be handling for the rest of the day. But uh, that's a good thing to do. Make sure and keep your hands clean. Of course, y'all knew that already. I just had to say it. Good morning. Continuing on with our tallow making. I let this sit in the refrigerator overnight. You can get a good look at it down here. All right, now what we're going to do, turn the camera down here, maybe we can see. I'm going to take this out, the part where it has solidified. Well, I'm going to try to take it out. It won't 
see if we can cut it in half. There we go. What do you think? That is a nice, nice chunk of tallow right there. Set it in the sink for just a minute. Take out the other half. Now you could continue just to let it boil and eventually that water will boil out. But that'll take so long it's much easier to do it this way. Alright, now what's left over? See that gel stuff? That's similar to what's in um, the actual hide. You can make hide glue. Which we'll go into that another time. Hang on, let me wipe my hands on something. And we'll move the camera up just a little bit. I'm just going to rinse this out. I don't want that excess water in there. It's already sprinkled rain this morning. I don't want to deal with the fire, so we're going to use the camp stove. Let's see, he moved you over this way. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'll let that sit there and get hot for a minute and it'll evaporate that water off of there. <coughs> there we go. See, I turned the camera on and here we go with that again. Okay, now we're going to rinse this off. You can see on the bottom where it's some of the heavier pieces are. We'll rinse that off a little bit. Pardon me. Alright, I'm just going to let it melt. And come to a boil. And let it boil for just a few minutes. What little bit of water that is left on it from when I rinsed it off. That'll come off and then we'll start straining. Now while that's boiling down, I'll show you how we're going to strain this real quick. These little strainers like this will work. I've got a big one that'll fit on top of a can, a number 10 can, but wherever it's at, who knows. But um, this, this was a set of three. I don't know where the middle, middle size one is either. I picked them up at, I think at the hardware store for two or three dollars. So no big deal. I take, like I said, number 10 can. This one has sweet potatoes in it. You know, my wife works at the bakery and they make sweet potato pies and all that kind of stuff. And any kind of fruit filling that you can think of comes in these cans and they just throw them in the trash. So she brings me home some every now and then. <coughs> They're real handy to have around and keep all kind of stuff in them. Take a piece of burlap, plain old burlap. 
down here you can see what I'm doing. A little bit of a put a couple rubber bands on it, hold it in place. And the reason you want to put it in a metal container when you get ready to strain it is because it's going to stay in this can. And after we're going to pour some in some of these tins, I got two little tins here that I want to fill up. And once we pour it in there, and this will turn back, back hard again. And we need to get some more out of the can. We can just put it over the fire and warm it up, and pour it back, and fill our tins back up. But to start with, we're going to pour it all in here, and then I'll fill the tins. Let's get another little look. Yeah, it's melting down. Now you can also use this to make soap, make lye soap, just like you do hog fat or anything else. And matter of fact, I have some that I made a couple of years ago. And when we come back here in just a minute, I'll show you what that looks like. I've still got some in the pot. Alright, now we're boiling real good. It's been boiling for a little while. And we'll be careful not to get it too hot because it will burn if we get it too hot. Uh, let me put the camera right here. See if you can see it. Can you see that? pour it in here turn the fire off let's see See all those little fine pieces that that burlap picked up? You don't want that in your in your final product. Yeah. Now let's take this off. Without getting burned, maybe. I get close to a fire, I get burned. It's like, much as I deal with knives, I still get burned. Now if you want to really, really refine it, you can strain it again in some cheesecloth or something. But we don't need to do all that, I don't think. Okay, you see this? I'm going to fill this little round tin. That'll be enough. This had a... Uh, see there? <laughs> oh well, not gonna hurt nothing. Had little candies in it, especially around the holidays, around Christmas and all. Even Valentine's Day, these little tins are all over the place. The big one here had a cookie in it. So now we're gonna try to fill this one without making a too big a mess. Just like that. Now we'll just let them sit here. Right where they are because they're hot. So I had to touch it, didn't I? See there we've got... That's a gallon can. That's a half a gallon. And just normal use. Using all my knives and my guns and my outdoor stuff. That will last... A long, long time. Move this up a little bit. What's going on with my tripod here? It's sort of lopsided. There we go. Alright, I'm going to let all this dry. Sorry, I guess I lied to you about the lasso. 
I went in the shop and looked and I can't find it. Maybe I used it all. I know I sent some of it out to some friends of mine last year. thought there was some more. That's just another excuse to, to make another video one day on how to make live soap. It's um very handy stuff to have too for a lot of reasons and we'll get into all that one when I get time to do that. We'll be back in just a few minutes and I'll show you the final product here and talk about something else I guess. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Here's our little tin, our round tin. See there? You need to use some of it. Rub your finger on there. Because it don't take a lot of this stuff. So you just rub your finger. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Hang on. Rub your finger on it. Rub it on the knife blade. This is an old workhorse knife here. I use this to beat and bang on, scrape and everything. Your fine coat on there. That's got some on there where I was poking it down in there already. This blade needs some attention. But what I use it for, it's okay. There'll be some of this style coming up here soon too. Be careful around the edge. Just like that, put it back in your sheath and you're good to go. There's the little tin. And I like to carry, a, I've got one almost the same size in my pack that I carry. Now in the hot summertime, if this gets too hot, it will start to get a little soft. So before you put it in your pack, you may want to put it in a, um, a piece of oil skin or a Ziploc bag, something like that. And so if it does, get a little soft and a little gooey it won't leak all over your other stuff and this tin here I got it all over it I got to clean it up real good and I'll leave this one in the shop and this here it'll take the rest of the day for that to get solid again I won't put it in the refrigerator this time I'll just let it sit out here and then I've got a lid that'll fit on there and that's how you render Dear tallow, one more little note about this tallow. You'll run into some people sometimes that will say, I don't like deer meat because I ate some and it felt like it was sticking to the roof of my of their mouth. But what that is, is when you trim your deer meat, you, that's why you've got to get the white part out, the fat. You've got to get that out because if you cook that with it in there, this is what it is. And it will, it'll stick because as soon as it gets just a little bit cold, if it's hot, you put it in your mouth and start chewing, it'll get cool enough to where it'll, it'll solidify. That's why it's important to trim your deer meat real good, especially if you're going to feed it to somebody that's never had it before. Because you eat something one time, get a bad experience, and most people will never try it again. So, so that's something to keep in mind. Now the hides I did yesterday, they're over in the bucket in the lime water, uh, soaking two or three days, should be good enough, and that hair will slip off of there, and I'll do another video on that. Uh, I shouldn't lose them this time, yesterday it was warm, I just looked at the thermometer at 75 degrees now, but we got some bad weather coming in, first they said tomorrow, now they're saying tomorrow night, but after that it'll get cold again. So. Uh, who knows? This is the craziest weather year. I thought about hunting today, this afternoon, but I've just got too much work to do. I've got eight knives, and they're almost finished. Epoxy's setting up on a few of them right now. Uh, all but two of them are already, already traded or sold, and the other two I'll put up. I put pictures of all of them up on uh, over on the Facebook page. Uh, Wallace Knife Works on Facebook. Y'all go over there and check that out. And what else? I was going to tell y'all. Right, now, right now, I'm busier than I've ever been in the knife shop. 
I've still got all my work to do around here. And it's time for us to get the garden ready because we plant, I'll start planting uh, the first part of March, a few things, and the rest of it will go till April. Also next month, I go back, back to the cardiologist down in South Florida to see whether or not I'll have this next surgery, if I have it in March or the next month, or, or exactly what's going on. Because I've got cardiologists here in, over in Pensacola, and I've got one down in Gainesville. And they've been talking back and forth, and something got all fouled up, I will say, uh, with some of my records. So I've, I've got to go to Gainesville and see that doctor. I may have the procedure then. I may not. It just depends. But that's still a good ways off. And as of today, we have not counting today. We've got 27 more days to deer hunt. So if it gets cold, I'll go back to the woods and see if I can't get us another deer. But if not, we've got some meat in the freezer, and we'll just have to deal with it as it comes. It's one of those things I want to go. I want to shoot one, but there goes that rooster again. But I've got too much work to do, too much work to do around here. Y'all know how it goes. Work before pleasure, right? Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed this little process. I know this second part is going to run long, but that's okay. I like long videos. So thank y'all for watching. Thank you for your support. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.